Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabe with the Hunts Fan TV, man. Back with the guys, Nevin and Evan here. We're going to give the uh, Ravens versus Browns uh, preview. Big divisional game. Uh, the Ravens' second game in the division. Big time game. But before we get into that, you know, the Ravens did get some big news today. Um, so I want I want to ask the guys a couple of questions about how they feel about a couple of things. So first, we're going to start off with the uh, J.K. Dobbins knee surgery, how you guys feel about that. And uh, the Deshaun Jackson signing. Obviously, you know, that's a little bit bigger than signing like an Andy Isabella. Deshaun Jackson is a proven talent in this league. So, you know, I want to get you guys thoughts on that, and then uh, we'll roll into the game preview. What, what you guys got about those two things? Not happy about the JK thing, but karma something else. Uh, talking about how you want more time and stuff like that. And, you know, with, you know, the Ravens having the mentality of which is not trying to burn you out, not trying to get you injured again. Here we are, all over again. Wish it didn't happen. Not like wishing none of that, up, you know, up on him. But it is interesting that it happened. Um, I'm cool with the Deshaun Jackson. Um, if you want a, a, a wide receiver to come out of retirement, you know, straight out of the retirement home and maybe catch a couple passes. I mean, that's come on over. You know, we have a spot for you. I promise. And that's just how it has always been. Um, it hasn't always been bad, though. I mean, obviously, we got your Steve Smith, so the world, your Anquan Bolden. So I am curious to see how Deshaun Jackson um, does contribute. Having that speed definitely, I think, to some extent will help if he's, you know, still just as fast. Um, even if he's just a tad slower than what he was, I think that'll help. But, um, you know, otherwise, I'm not mad at it. Wish we would have, you know, possibly gotten someone younger with some longevity. Um, to kind of build with and build upon, but um, yeah, I mean that's just that's just how I see it. So I think you know over time we'll hopefully this this works out because right now we just need just about anything so we can you know be consistent and finish out these games. All right, so as far as JK Diamonds go, um, wishing him a speedy recovery, take the necessary time and rehab that he needs to get back right. Um, it's unfortunate that he has to have this knee surgery uh, due to tightness, I believe it was, in his knee. Uh, but that's basically, I'm guessing that's why the Ravens did what they were doing, trying to hold him out a little bit. So I, I'm pretty sure that when Gus is ready to go, they'll be very cautious with him as well. Probably won't be as lenient with how we play Gus, even though Gus's injury happened a little bit later. Um, or did it? Yeah, it happened a little bit later. And, um, you know, we got to just, we got to monitor that situation correctly, uh, especially with, uh, with, with him. So that's, that's, that's tough with Gus. Cause it, I, I just want to see how we going to play it with Gus. You know, I think we're going to take it, take it a lot easier with Gus, uh, going forward. And, um, you know, I'm wishing a speedy recovery for JK. And as far as DJAC goes, I didn't like the signing off rip. I'm going to be honest with you. So I'm I'm one of them Ravens fans like, look, yo, prove me wrong. Prove me that, prove to me that this was the right move. I mean, I know what he could do. All the all the highlights they were showing of him was from 8 to 10 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, I'm I'm – I'm a little pessimistic on that because, for one, uh, you know if he's in the game, we're throwing the ball because who is he blocking? All right, that's one. And for two, of course, he can stretch the field. Of course, the last thing he's going to lose is the speed. They be saying Joey Galloway can still run like a 4-4. You get what I'm saying? So, I mean, I know he's not going to lose the straightaway speed. And then the next problem I have is the injuries. I mean, he's a buck sixty-five. Not he's not. I don't think he's ever been over a buck sixty-five. You get what I'm saying? He a buck sixty-five. He can't avoid contact, but you know, like I know, when you run, when you run fast, when you a track star, track runner, them hammies, they be they're very liable. They're the liability here. And thirty-five years old injuring a hamstring or a groin or anything of that nature, any strains and the quads, that could sit him down for a long time. Just look at the boy Julio. Julio ain't really played since week one. 
You know what I'm saying? He had problems uh, last year. Yeah, with the Titans when he, I believe he injured his hamstring. So I just hope that everything work out. I know we signed him to the practice squad, and he probably won't play until about maybe week. What is it? Week six. He probably won't play till week eight, week nine. Hopefully, if they if they smart, I don't think there's no need to rush uh, Deshaun Jackson out there, and because I mean we got me for here in shape. Football shape is a total different shape than any other sport. You guys make some good points. Um, as far as J.K. I see some Ravens friends saying now, oh, the Ravens should have been more cautious to plan. That's what the Ravens were. They were cautious. It was J.K. that went back, get back on the field. Uh, I'm not blaming anybody in this situation. J.K. wanted to play. He's a player. He should. Their team wanted to be cautious with him because they care. All right? And that's what happened. So it's, it's really nobody's fault. Um, if you want to blame something, I, I'm blaming that MetLife field. That, that, that turf is terrible. It's, to me, it's no coincidence that he gets knee tightness on that field. To me, it's no coincidence. I'm sorry. That MetLife Stadium field is trash. Um, as far as DJAC, I already made a video about it. But this last thing about DJAC, um, he has a skill set that can help the Ravens. He is a fast player. Yes, I'm going to admit that. Um, but I, I'm with you guys. Prove me wrong. Make me – I'll never root against my own team, right? I would never do that. So if he, if he goes out there and balls, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm just not going to get my hopes up that it's going to happen. That's it. Um, he was catching passes from Donovan McNabb and Michael Vick. Okay, I, I, you know what I mean. Like we got to be honest here. This, this you know, that, when he's on the Eagles, that's when we catch a pass from. That's a long time ago. It's a long time ago. Um. Anyway, so let's let's get into this uh, Ravens versus Browns preview. All right. So I'm going to do the injury report for both teams really quickly. Obviously, we know J.K. Dobbins is out. Uh, guys that are questionable expected to play as far as the Ravens go: Mark Andrews, Marcus Peters, Pat McCarr, Ronnie Stanley should play. Um. Guys that are going to play, that's one injury report. Calais Campbell, Lamar Jackson had a little hip thing, but apparently he's fine. Justice Hill, your boy Nevin is already back. I mean, I thought he was down for a while. He's already back. So, shout out Justice Hill. J.C. Pierre-Paul is going to play. And then you got your guys who are game-time decisions, all right? You got your Rashad Batemans, your your Ben Cleveland's, your Justin Houston, your Morgan Moses. Uh, I don't think Morgan Moses is a play, but, you know, got to mention. Now, as far as the Browns, the big guys on the Browns that are out, Denzel Ward is out. He's already been ruled out. And then they're missing two offensive linemen, uh, Wyatt Teller, a guard, and Joe Haig, a tackle. So the Browns are missing some key players, and Jadavion, and Jadavion Clowney, excuse me, is questionable. So that's kind of where I want to start. I want to start with this uh, Browns defense versus Ravens offense, all right? Right now, I'm looking at the Browns numbers. Uh, damn, I had it. Where is it? Okay. So the Browns allow... The 19th most pass yards, 230 a game, and they allowed a 24th most rushing yards, 131 yards a game. All right. So, with that being said, what are you guys looking out for for this Ravens offense versus Browns defense? Okay. So, this week, so Denzel Ward is out. Uh, they just got, uh, what is, who was the linebacker they just traded for from Atlanta? Deion Jones. Okay. So I believe we should uh he should be one of those X factors on their defense. We need to make sure we know where he at at all times. I can see him spying Lamar. Um even though I ain't gonna lie, spying Lamar don't really work if you ask me, but you know. Um I think that we'll I think we're gonna get pretty ver it's supposed to rain Sunday. I'm not sure how uh how locked in that is. You know how the weather is, but I think we'll get a heavy dose of running. I think we're gonna get some Kenyon Drake. A lot of I think Kenyon Drake is gonna be the future back, of course. Um, and uh, you know we're just gonna keep keep uh, hopefully we keep running the ball. I'm not sure if Bateman is gonna play. If Bateman plays, I can see him. Uh, I don't I don't want us to rush Bateman back because he was in a walking boot like two weeks ago. You know what I'm saying? So he needs to just take all the time that he need. Maybe we can with Greg on. We can use Duvernay. I seen last week um, that he had he had said something to someone like after the game, like we didn't use Duvernay enough last week. And I'm thinking, like, you think, you know? So it's like I'm expecting a big game from from Duvernay, whether Bateman plays or not. 
And I'm also expecting a big game from uh from King Drake as well. Um I think he's gonna play pretty well this week. So I'm looking forward to it. Mark Andrews will probably play. Uh and if Mark Andrew, Andrews doesn't play, we have Josh Oliver and Isaiah Lightly to step up. And I think this could be a big game for for Lightly, hopefully, if if uh if Mark Andrews doesn't play. But that's what I'm expecting from the offense. A heavy dose of the run. And you know, being able to hit him over the top a couple of times. I agree. Um, you know, I'm watching some of the film. I'm not scared of their secondary, like at all. Um, you take Denzel Ward out of it, I'm really not scared. The only person I'd say the X factor is Miles Garrett. I'm always keeping my eyes on him. Um, he's still who he is. Uh, um and I think that, you know, again, once Lamar, of course, when it comes to being in a pocket and throwing touchdowns and stuff, there's no issue there. But I can see, especially if you're saying it's raining, getting uh, flustered out of the pocket. And then we got to figure something out after that. I'm not worried about that, but that's just, you know, what I foresee. And I see him being the one that's kind of the catalyst and the troublemaker um, for that. But again, not really worried. Um, offense, I do. I like what Evan said. Um, I've been agreeing with him a lot, too. I don't know what's going on. Um, with King and Drake, for sure. Um, of course, you limit Justice Hill and his touches. Um, but if it's going to rain, we just got to rely heavily on that. And, you know, Lamar's legs. Um, Lamar has been – not like he was ever bad at it. Like, I think that all the pundits and stuff like that talk about, oh, he needs to get out of bounds and stuff like that. I don't think he was necessarily bad at it. He wasn't getting popped a lot. But I think this season especially, like, he's been a lot more cautious. So I do want to see him get out there and um and break another one like he did with Miami. Um, but I think those two, King and Drake and then um Lamar, really running wise, um, I think that's gonna be the X factors on that. And then again a defense uh for the Browns, Miles Garrett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You brought you brought up the guy I'm thinking about, My, Miles Garrett. Um I feel great that Ronnie Stanley is back because Trey, Trey Henderson is a good player, right? Um, the Giants got a good defensive line, but Miles Garrett is a whole different beast. So this is Ronnie Stanley's to me. Real, I'm not gonna say real first, because like I said, Trey Henderson is a good player, but Miles Garrett is another level. So um, if Ronnie can handle Miles Garrett this game or or really hold his own, um, I think we could say he's he's back. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, as far as for the Ravens. Um, I'm putting all Isaiah likely hype on hold until Greg Roman decides to use him more. I can't, I can't continue to to have my hopes up for him and and things like that. Um, he's only playing like 34% of the snaps, and it's kind of like what Evan said earlier with the Deshaun Jackson thing. When Isaiah likely's on the field, it's a tell that we're passing the ball. You know what I mean? Is we're not getting creative. We're not we're not mixing it up. It's it's pretty much hey, he's on the field. We're probably gonna throw the ball right. Here. Um, but uh, Ravens offense, if it does rain, if, I just looked at it, Evan was right. It's like an 80% chance of rain. They said it's supposed to be like a light rain. We'll see We'll see if that changes, if it changes the heavy. Um, but the Ravens run game has picked up at the right time. Ken Drake is looking good. He's put the back, he's put together back to back good weeks. I want to see three weeks in a row now because, like, 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 Nevin, like you said, they're not going to throw Justice, Justice Hill to the wolves. You feel me? Um, they, 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 they're going to mix them in. They're going to mix them in. So I think Justice Hill probably get. I don't know, you know, 10 to 15 snaps, maybe it could be less than that. I don't think they're going to rush him out there. So it's going to be the King and Drake show. It's going to be this offensive line show that's been run blocking really well versus this Cleveland team who can't stop the run. Uh, last week, they got, last week they got burned by Bailey Zappi throwing the ball because they were so focused on the run. Um, so we'll see if that maybe that happens again where they so focused on our run game that maybe Lamar gets off throwing the ball. You know, I mean, maybe that happens, you know. I'll uh, be interested to see if that's the case this week. But honestly, all in all, um, Devin DuVernay thing, I'm tired, of, I'm tired of Greg Roman saying after the game, yeah, we should have did this, we should have did that. That's my biggest issue. No, not, that's, my, that's, that's one of the biggest issues. Where are the in-game adjustments? Dev, Devin DuVernay doesn't get a carry last week. You know what I mean? You running him on jet sweeps his whole career. And all of a sudden, when he's a featured guy, he can't get a carry after having a great game plan versus the Bengals. There's just no consistency week to week. 
Um, so hopefully Duvernay gets more involved, whether Bateman plays or not. Um, so yeah, that, that's my thoughts on the offense. Bateman, I'm sorry, uh, Duvernay get involved, King and Drake, and can we contain Miles Garrett? That's that, that's the main thing. Because like 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 you said, now, I'm not worried about nobody in the secondary. Nobody really scares me. Uh, Greg Newsom, he's all right. You know, he's a, he's a good he's a good young player, but he ain't, he ain't Denzel Ward. So that's not what I'm worried about. So let's go to that um, other side of the ball. Ravens defense versus this Browns offense. And I got the Browns numbers here. They're 23rd in passing with 213 yards a game. They are first in rushing, 172 yards a game rushing the ball. They are the best running offense in the league right now. We know what they got in Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt. So how you guys feeling about them going into the Sunday game? I feel like um, I feel like our front our front line going to show up today. Well, Sunday they gonna show up. They gonna show up and show out. They've been playing. I feel like our like our run defense probably has been uh probably been the highlight of our defense for the most part this season. Um, I'm going to need my linebackers to scrape and fill and and make plays. You know they're going to probably run the ball a lot. They don't believe in Jacoby Brissett. Who they got on the outside that they believe in? Wide receiver wise, Amari Cooper. Yes, they do. They they do have Amari Cooper, and we need to stop him. You know, um, I'm looking. I'm looking to see how we get out the field on third downs. Um, it was brought to my attention that uh, a lot of third downs last week we were getting, you know, beat on where we should have not been getting beat on. So. I'm keeping a very close eye on that nickel corner position. I seen that they were cycling in uh, Darius Washington and uh, Demarion Williams, aka Pepe. You know we got, you know we got to hold off on the nicknames until, you know, dudes make plays. You know, like I'm not saying he not that. I like his game, but all the nickname calling, we got to hold off on that until they make some, some, some plays, some favorable plays. You know. Uh, so I've been I'm gonna pay attention to that nickel corner position a lot if they if they even utilize it because I'm not sure what what type of offense that the Browns run. I know that they run heavy at the moment, you know, because Jacoby Brissett is that quarterback. But by the time I think we we play the Browns again when they get a uh, nasty man back, right? Yeah. So by that time, I can see them trying to fake air us out. So. You know, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how uh, our nickel our nickel corner whoever's playing in that in that role, you know, stands up this week. See see what because because when we get into them third and fives and third and sevens, uh, you know, they like teams like to run crossing routes or quick slants or like a, a five or seven yard out to get a, to get it to move the chains. Let's let's see if uh, our nickel corner can stop that from the slot and you know get out the get out the field. And while I like your take on the nickel corners, I'm still looking at uh I mean I'm just looking at the Browns offense. Um Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. I mean, yeah, we can stop the run all we want, but that's that's just a different kind of tandem right now. And it seems like there's some consistency because they've been pretty decent the past couple of years ago. Um so they they they're on a run right now. Wanna see what our defensive line can do. I'm not worried about the offensive line, you know, as far as um, the Browns are concerned, but it's just a matter of our defensive line getting that penetration and um, stopping that run. Jacoby Brissett, whatever. <laughs> I mean, you know, he's he's there. So, I mean, we, out of respect that Amari Cooper, I've never really been, like, you know, big on Amari Cooper. He was, he's okay to me, but I'm just like, he he can do something at times, but I'm still like, mm, he's he still wanted, that yeah, he one of them guys that's always open, yeah. And, and, and while I get that, I also look at who's throwing him the ball and if that guy can throw him the ball. <laughs> and I don't think that Jacoby Brissett's going to be making all those passes, to be honest with you. So, oh, and one quick thing, too, Evan, when it comes to nicknames, I agree with you. However, NFL young boy is hilarious, and that should never go anywhere, no matter how many plays he made. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, so so, <laughs> all right. With, with Pepe, that that's that's from his childhood. So I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna call him Pepe. I'm gonna call him Pepe. Now, if a fan would have gave him that, I would have to hold off on that. Um, but to answer your question about the Browns, I looked it up real quick. They their main their 
sorry, the packs that they're in the most is 11 personnel. So one tight end, three receivers. So they run the ball out of that. That's spread draw. They run the ball out of that a lot. They in that 40, so like 45 or 40 percent of the time, something like that. 45 percent of the time, they're they're in the 11 personnel. So that that's their most common formation or personnel stat, I should say. Um, but in this game, uh, I'm looking for that third corner, like you said, honestly, too, because he's going to be on the field. You know, look at the Browns, look at the percentage, he's going to be on the field. And McDonald said this week that cornerback three is an open competition. So Brandon Stevens, or Darius Washington, Pepe Williams, they all got a shot to play. And I like what I see from Pepe Williams, all right? Um, I think he's tough. He's 5'10", 180 pounds. He'll tackle anybody. Like, I'm serious. I wouldn't be surprised if we see this week, he goes up, David and Joker catches the ball, Pepe Williams breaks him down. I'm dead serious. You know what I mean? I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be shocked by that at all. Um, and then, you know, Ed, you brought up a good point on third down. Um, this is the biggest difference between Wink and Mike McDonald. The Ravens play so soft on third down, bro. It could be third and five. We off eight yards. We giving up hitches, drags, anything underneath. Then we got to tell these guys, wrap up and tackle. And we know this team can miss tackle sometimes. So that, so that underneath stuff, they get broken tackle. Now it's first down. But it, when it was wink, you had seven guys with a lot of scrimmage. You know, we, you're not going to get all this time to throw the ball, right? Now, I'm not saying I miss Wink Martindale. It was time for the Ravens to move on and do something different. I'm not saying that at all. But um, too many times the Ravens played really good defense the first two downs. Then third down, we get the third down seven plus, and we're just off too far. It's easy throws. It's easy windows. And now, when it's time to go off the field, they can't. So, um, hopefully, that changes. They got corners that want to challenge receivers. A lot of these, a lot of these cornerbacks to challenge receivers on third down. Like Pepe wants to get in your face. Marlon Humphrey wants to get in your face. Brandon Steve wants to get in your face. Marcus Peters wants to get in your face. Or Darius Washington wants to do that. Let these guys be. Let them guys be themselves. They don't want to play off. Let them guys challenge the receivers. Um, also, I, now, now this is a shout-out, for real. Uh, Patrick Queen has been balling the last two weeks. We call him out when he's playing bad. And we got to call him, We got to say it when he's playing good. He had a good game versus the Giants. Um, he had a good game versus the Bengals. So we need it again, Patrick, right? This is a running team. This is uh, Nick Chubb coming down here, Kareem Hunt coming down here. And like Nevin said, Jacoby Brissett not scaring nobody, all right? Uh, Jacoby Brissett done lost them games this year, if we're being honest. If, if if they would have had, you know, AKA Nasty Man out there, if Browns the record is probably a little different. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that they didn't and they had Jacoby Brissett out there, um, who is a average backup, that's what he is, he's an average backup quarterback. Um, you know, the Browns record is probably a little different than what it is right now. So um the Ravens have to get the, the Browns in situations where it's third and long and don't play soft, play up. I trust Marlon Humphrey on on Amari Cooper. I trust Marcus Peters on Amari Cooper. So I'm not, he's a beast. I'm not, I'm not taking nothing away from him, but I trust those guys, you know what I mean, in that situation that comes down to it. Um, so, yeah, that, that's my thoughts on that. Uh, what's your guys, you guys got any X factors for this game? You know, offense or defense, doesn't matter either side that you're looking out for for this Sunday's game. X factor this week is going to be for me on defense. Whoever's at that nickel corner, whether it's Brandon Stevens, Pepe, or uh, or Darius Washington, whoever's at that third corner, that's how uh, that's gonna be our expected. That's gonna be my defense expected this week. Uh, and for offense, I'm gonna go with uh, Duvernay. Duvernay gonna be our expected this week because I'm pretty sure they're gonna feature feature him now. Now that they were actually. It's between Duvernay and Kenyon Drake. So I'm going to go Kenyon Drake. You had two good weeks back to back. Let's make it three. You know what I'm saying? Get out there, run that pill like you've been running the pill, and get up out of there get with a win, a divisional win. All right. I know I like hot takes. I want to see, <laughs> I want to see what JPP does. I want to see what he does on that on that D line. I want to see. I want to see what I saw a couple of games ago. I remember I shouted him out. I was like, "He's gonna do all right." So I want I want to see that. Um, again, that's my my left field, but you know I'm always right. <laughs> um, offense, I agree with you know. Um, King and Drake, 
I want to see something. I want to see how they would use James Roche too. I am kind of curious about that. If they're going to try to weave him in to anything now that, you know, it's not, they're not going to no, you, you're not with it, Gabe. I'm curious. I'm just curious. That's all. I mean, I'm not looking forward to him being like no X Factor, but definitely King and Drake. 100 percent but I'm just curious just about curious that. No, I, I like him. It's not his fault. It's the Ravens' fault. It's not his fault. Good point. It's a lot of personnel. Well, Ravens uh coordinators and stuff fault with a lot of this stuff, whatever. But again, I'm King and Drake all the way. Um I think he's gonna have a good game. As much as I want to see my boy Justice Hill out there, um, you know, that's 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 how I'm leaning. Uh, you making me talk about James Proche, right? There, there. So there's this guy EJ that comments on my videos who thinks I'm the biggest James Proche fan, and he just, just like he thinks he's the bomb, right? So this EJ, this, this, this is for you, real quick. The Ravens said that they're going to use James Proche. Don Harbaugh said he expects him to make some plays this week. He said that he said the Giants were in big personnel, so we had to match big personnel. To me, which is stupid. They're in big personnel, spread them out. But that's not that's not the team's philosophy. That's not what they do, right? So. Uh, but hey, that's not what they do, right? Um, so they said they better see James Proche some more. Okay, so we'll see where that goes from there. Um, I think he's a good player, Steve Smith. I don't know if y'all saw the clip of Steve Smith talking to um Shannon Sharp. He said he believes James Proche is the best all around receiver the Ravens have. That's what that's what Steve Smith said. All right. Uh, I'm not saying I agree with that. I'm just saying James Proche has talent, and when he plays, he usually does something. Then he doesn't play again. So. Whatever the Ravens do with him, I just think he won't play here. He'll go to his next team, and maybe he'll play well. Maybe he won't. But his opportunity, I just think, won't come with the Ravens, honestly. All right, so um, X factors on offense and defense. So, Kane Drake, I think, is pretty consistent. Um, that's not the guy I'm looking for. Make, make it three meets in a row. Uh, it's a lot like Devontae Freeman. We remember how he was dragging Devontae Freeman last year. He was terrible in the first couple of weeks. And then he got it going. He was clearly our best running back, right? Um, Kendrick could be on that same kind of run. Well, we'll see when Gus comes back, but to Kendrick could be on that same kind of run. So, um, on defense, I'm going to go with um, the guy that's been having a good year every single game. I mean, good, I mean, good game every every time this year. So, uh, that's Dustin Matter BK. Uh, I want to see what he could do clogging up that middle. Um, can he can he get a couple hits on Nick Chubb in the backfield? Can he get a couple? Can he get to the Kobe reset a couple times? So that's really what I'm looking for, man. Um, so. Last thing, you know what we gotta do? It's prediction time. What y'all got for the Sunday's game, man? I hate this part of it because every time I'm like, "Yeah, man, we got, we gonna be good." It's like last week. Yeah, we gonna be good. We won good. Second half. Um, so I'm gonna say this. I'm just gonna say that we're gonna win by three. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it a little closer. And I'm going to say maybe like a 24, 21, um, you know, and fingers crossed. I don't see that from um, Justin Tucker again. I remember as soon as I saw that, I texted y'all. I was like, yo, it's, that's a wrap. I, was like, I ain't even want to sit there and jinx it. But come on now, y'all know when you start, when you see that happen, when you see him miss, yeah, something not right that day. The universe is off. But I think he's going to be good. I think we're going to get to that 24, 21 um, Ravens win. Um, let's get this divisional win in, you know, especially while uh nasty man, quote unquote, ain't in there. And, you know, the Browns are, you know, kind of decimated at the moment. <laughs> Nicknames <laughs> fell upon one right there, man. I can't take credit for that one. Yo, no, but you know, if you're in these, t- if you're in these Twitter streets, you didn't seen it already. You just seen all the photoshops. <laughs> the bull looks smack like, uh, Mr. Cosby. But we're gonna we're gonna keep moving forward here, right? <laughs> um, so prediction wise, I'm gonna have to go with uh I hate doing this too, Nevin. I swear I do. So I'm gonna go seventeen seven Ravens. All right, that's that's what I'm at with. I think we win we win by ten points. I don't even like doing this because the last couple of times we done did it, man. I've been way off. Way, way off. But it's a divisional game. You know what you're going to get from the Browns. The Browns know what they're going to get from us. So they're pretty familiar. It's going to be a – I think it's going to be a – not a low-scoring game, but it's not going to – it's going to be one of – just like how the Bengals game was kind of. So I'm I'm, going to go with 17-7. 
Uh, we're going to wrap it up here. I'm going to give my prediction. Uh, real quick, I want to say, hey, Lamar, we all believe in you. It's time for a good game. Uh, I'm not saying you've been playing bad, but it's time for one of them Lamar Jackson's kind of games. You feel me? It's time for one of them kind of games, bro. Uh, so as far as the prediction go, I'm going Ravens by six. I'm either thinking 20 to 14 or 23 to 17. That's if the Ravens decide to play four quarters. Now, the Ravens decide to play three and a half quarters, three quarters. Again, I don't know what the score is going to be because you can flip a coin what's going to happen in the fourth quarter. I don't know. But the Ravens say that we're going to close the game out how they did kind of versus the Bengals a little bit. I think they win this game by at least six points. AFC North, um, is, is, these, these games is tough. They rugged. They're not going to be super high scoring in my opinion. So uh, 23-17 Ravens, that, that, that's, that's what I'm going with. And uh, yeah, man, so we're going we're gonna to end the video here. Uh, Ravens winning. Uh, close game, go to 2-0 and in the AFC North. Uh, that would be, what, 4-3 and overall for the season. So good game for the Ravens, man. Um, thank you guys who, are, who watched up to this point. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on all the videos. Uh, from Nevin, Evan, just on the fan TV, man. We out.